All right, well, here to discuss this flurry of M&A activity is Henry Dixon. He's the co-founder and manager of Investment Manager. Matterly, thank you very much for coming in to speak to us. So something like $10.5 billion in worldwide M&A was announced on Monday. So why didn't these deals lift the market? Um, well, I think we've got to take that in context. It's actually been quite a good year, particularly for Western markets, which I think have been the brunt of the activity from a bid perspective, really. I think yeah, just yesterday, in the UK, we had Unilever moving for Abelto Culver in the States. And I think that, for me, looks a lot like the Ricketts SSL deal, if you like. Um, and I think it's quite interesting if we maybe did just go back to the financial crisis of Q4 2008. Companies at that point in time put in tow a really record cost-cutting exercise, really. And as we move on, let's say, a year, year and a half from that cost cutting exercise, they're basically looking at their own cost story and saying, it's broadly speaking run its course. Uh, so where do we get our synergies from? And a natural answer to that is that they go and get, look at some of their competitors, their, their smaller competitors, and they go and buy them and they take out central cost bit distribution. So headline multiples for Ricketts and SL sell looked expensive, but the synergies made it look very reasonable. And again, Unilever's headline multiple of, let's say, 14 times EBITDA for our Belte Culver looks, looks really quite high, I think, but it's worth pointing out that they're both sending their same household products to the same shops, mm. and the distribution synergies are enormous, really. So what you're saying is that valuations right now pretty good? Yeah, I think so. I think looking at the index in general, I mean, it's been well documented. It's been a terrible decade for equities, but de equities are probably 20% lower than they were a decade ago at a time when earnings are up a third, basically. So those value is very apparent, I think. I mean, August, which is usually a quiet month, also saw a flurry of M&A activity. Mm. Will this level of acquisition continue? I think it will. Why we've got companies hoarding cash, while we've got a record level of low interest rates in the Western world on this cash, and dare I say, a low growth environment. Companies don't like to grow in, in a low growth manner. They, they do like to, if you like, accelerate their growth. And a natural way to accelerate their growth is use their cash pile that is ever increasing and to buy in growth. Um, and here and now we have a sort of, if you like, a cash equity arbitrage that has never been stronger in the Western world. Cash is on 200 times as we speak, and equity is on about 12 and a half times earnings. So I think while that exists, we're going to see a lot more activity into year end, no doubt about it. And do you expect the M&A to lift the market at some point or, yeah. or are the markets immune to it because of the other growth issues that you talk about? Yeah, I think, I think in general companies are really good indicators on the markets in general. I think if we were to go back and look at the last stock market cycle, let's say from 2003 to 2007, um, there's good M&A and there's bad M&A. I think good M&A is company on company um, because I think they're increasing their footprint, there's synergies for them to take out. And if you like, when you see company on company M&A, I think you should be positive on markets. As I say, go back to the last cycle, we saw a lot of company on company M&A, specifically in 03, 04, 05. And then dare I say it was come 06, 07 that we saw private equity take up the mantle and buy a lot of businesses with 90% debt. And clearly they and the banks that uh, helped them uh, were left with a bloody nose a year later, basically. Henry, thanks very much. Henry Dixon, fund manager at Matterly. Good to get your thoughts.